When you're processing your images in Lightroom Classic, there are plenty of options to choose from. However, do you really understand each slider? Most people don't. They bring their images in and move the sliders around just a little bit and see what looks good. And that's a valid way to do things. But today I'm gonna to start a series of how-to videos on how to explore some of the more lesser known features of Lightroom Classic because understanding these features can bring your images to a whole new level. We're gonna get started with the texture slider. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to use the texture slider and when to use it to really elevate your images. Coming up. Hi, I'm Terry Vanderheiden, professional photographer, and I'm teaching you how to get the most out of Lightroom Classic. I use this program just about every day to process my images. I only shoot raw images out of the camera, and because of that, I have a lot of freedom inside of Lightroom Classic to process my images. If this class is a little ahead of where you're, you're learning Lightroom at this point, check out some of my beginner classes on my YouTube channel. I'll leave a link up here, and I'll also leave a link down below in the description. Now today's episode is all about the texture slider and how we get the most out of it. So let's get into it. All right, we're inside of Lightroom Classic. We're in 13.5.1 is the version that we're working in. That's the newest one I have. And as we get in here, we've got a portrait of a woman. Now, this is probably how the texture slider was designed or what it was intended for when they first came up with it. So as we look up close, we can see, let's go ahead to 100%. We can see here that we've got face, we've got a few imperfections in the skin. I mean, like everybody's skin is gonna have a little bit of bumps and wrinkles and we have a really detailed lens that's shooting this kind of thing. You're gonna have a lot of details come up, right? So in this case, it's usually a little more attractive to soften the skin a little bit. So if we go into the basic panel of Lightroom and we slide down to presence. So this is under the presence area you'll see texture. Now, if we take texture and slide it to the right to increase the texture, well, we can see that we've kind of almost sharpened things, right? All of those pores and bumps get sharpened and it really, and it's an effect that maybe you want to use, but in this particular case, when we're working with skin, we want to soften it. So let's go the other direction. Let's go ahead and take that and slide it all the way to the other side. Now we can see that we've really softened that skin, all right? So let's go ahead and bring that back to square, and we're gonna just make a virtual copy of this. So we'll go up here, create a virtual copy. And in fact, you know what? Let's make two virtual copies, just so we have them. So now we've got a couple of images to work with here. They're all identical. And this one, we're going to, this is our first one. So we're going to go to the presence and we're going to slide our texture all the way down. So we've softened the skin. And if we compare this to the uh, first one that we did here, let's go ahead and do a quick compare. Take a second for those to load. You can see this one has the detail of the skin with no texture added. And this one has texture added. However, there's a little bit of a problem. In when we do texture overall, it doesn't know what you really would like to have sharp and what are the things that you want to have softened. So in this case, it's softened the eyebrow, it's softened the eye, it's softened everything, which for the most part isn't a great way to go. But I'll show you Lightroom has a really cool thing in it that, that makes this super easy. So let's go ahead and get back and we'll go into grab a third one. And now on this one, when we go into the develop module, we're going to go into masking. Let's go into masking. And this is pretty cool what Lightroom does. Lightroom has the ability to kind of seek out a face and you can see it right down here. It had found a person and it's gonna, it's highlighted it. So let's click on that. And now what Lightroom does is it'll go through and say, okay, what is it that you really want to affect on this face? We don't wanna do the entire person. We wanna do the facial skin and the body skin. So let's click both of those. You can see what Lightroom did real quick, like made a mask. And you can see that the lips aren't affected, the eyes aren't affected, and the eyebrows aren't affected, let alone hair and, and the whole shape of the body. So this is a really cool thing. So now we have the ability to have this mask. So let's scroll down just a little bit more. And we'll say create the mask. 
and we create the mask and of course it comes up here so we can see what our mask is. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in and go find that slider again for texture. So normally in here, when we come in, you know, it's under presence, right? When we're under the basic panel, but for some reason, Lightroom decided it would be better to call it under effects. So this is, this is the panel. It's down there a ways. It's not super simple to get to, but we go through tone, we go through color, a few other things, and we get to effects. And now we have our texture slider. So let's just do the same thing we just did. We're gonna take that slider, slide it all the way to the left. So we're gonna be maximizing the softness that we have. So now as we compare these two, let's go ahead and compare it to the very first one and put them side by side. And we can see what we've done. We have our original that has softened everything. And then our new one left the eye sharp. You can see the eye sharp were over on the right. The eye is not sharp. So this is a great way to go because you've now created a mask for just the skin. And so you're just softening the skin. Now this is ideal for people who are portrait photographers or wedding photographers, people photographers, because you can go in, mask somebody's face, do a quick texture slider, move it down and soften that skin, but not softening the whole image, right? You're just softening the skin. And it's a real quick, it's not the perfect way to do this, but uh, it is a great way to do this for really quick viewing of how it looks. It's gonna look so much better to the customer when they're looking at this image. So that's how the texture slider was probably intended to use. So let's come in here, we'll grab another image. This is some Aspens and let's do just a little bit of work on this. We'll go into develop module and we'll come up here and we'll eh, just change the exposure just a little bit. We'll take the highlights and bring them up, bring the whites up a little bit, trying to bring out that bark. And as we zoom up on this, let's go ahead and zoom up on it. You can see what we have here, right? So let's go ahead and do a virtual copy of this. And on this one, we are going to take our slider and we're gonna go down to the basic panel and we're gonna to go to presence and we're gonna slide this all the way to the right. And you see what we've done here. We've kind of sharpened this whole image. So it is a quick way to go in and sharpen some. Now it's not the ideal way to sharpen. Sharpening should be done specifically. I actually have a video on how to sharpen in Lightroom. I'll leave a link up here and down below as well if you like. But this is a quick way to get in and get a little more texture out of the image that you're working with. So this is a possible way to work with images inside of Lightroom and just sliding that texture over to get that little micro contrast that brings out the separation between the darks and the lights and makes it appear a little bit sharper. So here's an image that I shot in Grand Teton National Park and it's Oxbow Bend, and it's a very foggy day, right? So the way with fog and any kind of uh, material that you have in the air, whether it be smoke or, or uh, fog or moisture, that sort of thing, as things get farther away, it's gonna be less detailed, right? So you can see back here that the mountains aren't very detailed and these trees aren't, but as we get closer in the foreground, there's not as much material in the air, be it water or moisture, whatever the case is, and it, then it becomes sharper. So in this case, the foreground is real sharp, but the background is not. So in order to balance that out and make it a really soft, even shot, we're gonna do a little bit of work on this. So let's go into our basic panel. And the first thing we're gonna do is just alter the exposure a little bit. We'll just eh, probably lighten it up just a little bit, maybe create a little bit of contrast. And we'll take our, our shadows and lift our shadows a little bit in the foreground. So we got a little bit more detail in those. And then we'll probably add a little bit of saturation. So we'll bring some color into that. Now, obviously you could do some masking and things like that that would be real super simple on this, but we're just talking about the texture slider today. So what we wanna do is we want to be able to soften this area at the same level that we have back here. So in order to do that, Again, we're gonna do a mask. Now we could go over here and click the mask, but the easy way is just hit the letter K. You hit the letter K and it gives you a mask that's on a brush tip. So now you can see the brush right there. Now all we need to do 
is paint. So we're going to paint. In this case, we have auto mask on. So let's go ahead and turn that off. And we'll just paint all of this in here like this. So now we're going to go down to, remember, it's under effects now because we're inside the mask. And we'll slide that texture back over and soften that. And so now if we zoom up on this, you can see that we have softened the foreground similarly to the background. And if we didn't want that, you can see what it looks like. That's sharp. And if we take our eyeball off, then it's softened. That's a way that you can soften a landscape image to match the environment that makes the most sense, right? Because obviously, unless there's something in the foreground you really want to bring attention to, you may want to soften that to match the regular softness that's happening in the environment. Let's try another image here. So here's a, just a panoramic. You can see it's all in its raw form. Let's go ahead and do a little bit of work. Let's do a quick crop on it. We'll crop it up here. And then we'll do a little bit of work. We're gonna bring the exposure down just a little bit, bring our highlights down, bring our shadows up, add a little bit of quick saturation to it. And so there's our image. So let's do a virtual copy of that so we can show you the difference of what we've done on the, on the end, end job. So now when we look at this image, we'll see that the trees are sharp as well as the mountain. The mountain's pretty sharp as well. So when you're looking at perspective, you're gonna find that things will be softened in the background, right? So generally the eye will, will not wanna look at something that's out of focus or soft. Uh, unless it's the whole image and you're taking in the whole image like that image before. But generally, if, it, if it, the eye has an opportunity to go to a sharp part of the image, that's what it's gonna do. So what we're gonna do here is we're going to take a little bit of texture away from the mountaintop in order to bring the eye back to the trees in the foreground. So the way we do that is, again, we just hit the letter K, we get a little brush, and I like to use the auto mask on this. So we're going to make a smaller brush. And what we wanna do is we wanna just mask out the mountaintop. Let's go through here. And the auto mask does a pretty good job at masking that sort of thing out because it can tell the difference and if I went over a little bit, you just hold the option key down and then you can just bring it in to the areas where it doesn't look as good. There you go. That you can see it minuses it. And then of course it goes back to a plus and you can get it a little more refined. You know, you can be as refined as you want on this mask, depending on what you want to do. But for today's demonstration, we just mass out the, mount the mountaintop. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go into our effects again and slide our texture down. So we'll bring that slide that texture down on the mountaintop. Now, as we look at this, let's go ahead and compare this to our first one. Give it a second to load. And now you can see what we've done here. We have our sharp trees, but we've softened the mountains in the background to bring more attention to the trees. We're here, it's competing a little bit. So it's a way when you're doing an image to create an image the way that you want and soften areas of an image as you're working through your way through Lightroom. So always consider, is there something you'd like to be softened? And obviously there's things that you might wanna sharpen, but there are the things that you'd like to soften and the texture slider is perfect for that. If you're enjoying this kind of content, hit the like button. Also be sure to subscribe to the channel and ring the little bell icon to be reminded of my next video. I always read and respond to all my comments in the comment section. So feel free to leave a comment or a suggestion or a question and I'll get back to you. Now, if you'd like to contact me directly, feel free. My email is terry at imagelight.com. I'll answer your questions, add you to my mailing list, and that way you'll be alerted to my next video that way.
If you'd like to download some of these same images for practicing in Lightroom Classic, you can go to my website, imagelight.com, and click on free downloads. I'll leave a link in the description below. All right, let's get one more and we'll do something a little, a little fancier with it. So we've got an image here of a trail leading up to some aspen trees. So there's a lot of things we can do with this, but let's go into the develop module and we'll do some standard corrections to begin with. One, we'll probably bring up the exposure just a little bit. We will bring the highlights down just a little bit. We'll probably lift the shadows a little bit, probably go into vibrance since we're working with greens and we'll probably enhance that a little bit to try to get a little more color and tone out of that. So now that we've done that, let's go ahead and make a virtual copy. So we'll go in, make a virtual copy. And the only reason you need a virtual copy is if you just want to compare the things that you're doing, or in this case, I'm trying to show you a demo so that you can see the difference between the two. So here's our original that we've worked with. Now this one, we're going to go in and we're going to do a few things differently. One of the things that I like to do on an image is I like to kind of manipulate the eye just a little bit. So here's a way we can do it. Let's go in and hit the letter K, get us a new mask. We got our brush. And let's go ahead and brush this trail. Okay. And we don't mind if it overflows a little bit, you know, we could probably make it a little smaller near the back, but that's going to brush that trail. So now what I like to do is come up here, right click on that mask and say, duplicate and invert the mask. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to affect everything else. So now we can come in here to our, our tones and slightly darken that a little bit. You see how the trail then really jumps out. If we did it extreme, this is exactly what you'd see, but in this case, we're just darkening it a little bit to bring a little more essence to that trail. Okay. Now, if we want to, we can go back to the trail image, the trail mask, if you will, and we can lighten that a little bit. So let's go ahead and lighten it. That's probably good enough for the lightening of it. We can actually put a little more warmth to that. So we can go into our temp, add a little bit more yellow, and we're only adding that to the trail, right? We're not adding it to everything else. And then what we're going to do is come back up to this reversed mask. And we're going to take our texture slider, go down to effects, and we're going to slide the texture back on everything but the trail. So as we look at this image, we're bringing the viewer down the trail and everything else is a soft painted type of a look because we've taken the texture out of it. We've lessened the texture, I should say, out of it. And then we have the ability to have them lead them up the trail. So it's kind of a cool way that you can work with images. So think in terms of, of your final image and what you want the eye to do. Where do you want the eye to look? You want the eye to go here or there? Where, which direction you want it to go? So as a photographer, not only when we shoot things and we consider our composition, we also have the ability to, in post-processing, soften areas and lighten areas to get the viewer to look at what we want them to look at. All right, till next time, I'm Terry Vanderheiden. Thanks for watching.